Good morning and welcome to our service for Regent Street Methodist Church. Uh, this morning, it is a special service. It's our annual ARC service and the young people will lead us in our worship as we focus on God and bring him our praise and bring him glory. Before we do that, just a few announcements. Uh, and firstly, and importantly, I just want to, to say a word of thanks to all who contributed to this service, uh, all who indeed helped uh, bring it together and edit it, and those who helped to distribute it. Uh, every Sunday is a team effort, but this Sunday in particular uh, is, is a it's a team involvement and many people have been involved and so I thank you particularly to all those children, young people who who have helped out uh, to make the service what it's what it is. As I say thank you to, to those involved in the service. I, I wanted to say a word of thanks to to all of you who have been uh, ongoing helping uh, with our efforts to just just to share some Christian love with the BCM Parental Support Group. Uh, thank you all, all of you who have contributed financially and in other ways. Uh, it, is, it is very important and during this continued time of, of difficulties that we're sharing God's love very practically. So thank you to, to each and every one of you for that. Thank you too to those of you who have got down and have been knitting the headbands. I've had an opportunity to see some of them. They're very colourful, but, but more than that, they're very practical. And uh, I haven't, haven't been wearing a mask really, but I, I hate to think what it would be doing to my ears if I had a mask on for, for hours and hours and end. So thank you to each of you who have been able to bring that bit of comfort and real help to those in our NHS who are wearing masks constantly. Thank you for those headbands. Uh, as I say, thank you in many ways to, to many of you. Thank you for all of you for continuing to pass on your prayers. And I would ask you to pray uh, for tomorrow night, Monday the 1st of June, is our church council. And we as leaders will be meeting on Zoom to, to reflect on where we are, on the work that we're doing at the minute, but also to consider the future. Uh, it may be uncertain, but uh, we, we're going to be seeking God's wisdom and guidance for the way forward for us as a church as we move into the autumn and perhaps as some of the restrictions are loosened. How do we respond and what might church look like? Uh, do pray for us as we meet and uh, for wisdom. Do also, uh, if you have anything that God has been laying on your heart, if you have an idea, if you have a, something that you that is stirring in you and you think, you know, I just want to ask that question. I just want to contribute in some way. Uh, the church council is never meant to be exclusive. So do sp pick up the phone, speak to me, uh, send me an email, speak to, to Caroline or Society Stewart or someone else on the church council uh, do share that thought, that question, that idea perhaps with them. And while we won't be able to discuss everything uh, in the limited time that we have, we will do our best uh, indeed to, to, to sift through everything that, that is shared with us and see, see how God might have us go forward in this time. Uh, now to finish these announcements, just a, a final Belated happy birthday to Desi Majemsi. Desi, uh, a little bird, told me that you had a significant birthday. I think it might have been a double figure seven, seven, seven uh, last Wednesday. Desi, we wish you well and you'll be glad to know, Desi, I'm not going to try and sing to you happy birthday right now. Everyone else will be very happy about that too. But but as a church, I, I just wanted to say on behalf of us all, Desi, I hope you had a lovely birthday and I hope and we pray that God would keep his hand upon you and upon Mary and the family in the um, in this year ahead that it would be a blessed year for you and a safe year.
I'm going to hand over now to Jamie as he welcomes us on behalf of the young people and, and leads us into our time of worship. Thank you. Welcome to our Ark and Young's People Group service. Unfortunately, we are unable to meet together this year, but we are able to join in our online services from our own homes. The theme of the service is Go the Extra Mile, and we begin with a sketch on salt and light. I'm salt and I'm very important. I give flavour to all our food and I've been used to preserve food and meats down through the centuries. Since 6000 BC, I have played my part in the history of the world. Huh? I am light. How could there be life without light? The sun rises in the morning and starts a day, and when night time comes, I can shine in the darkness. I am not just useful or merely important. I am essential. Oh, listen to you, all full of yourself. Well, I'm in se essential in life as well. You cannot live without me. People need salt in their diet. Without me, you can have muscle cramps, dizziness, or even worse. And too much salt in those chips isn't going to do much good for your health either. You have a purpose, I suppose, but not like me. Will plants grow without light? I'm everywhere. I'm in the sun, in the stars, reflecting off the moon. I'm in light bulbs, candles, fires, and provide warnings like, like a lighthouse or traffic lights. I was there from the very beginning, from the first day of creation. God hit the light switch and there I was. I have everything. Except humility, maybe missing a little bit on that front. I listened to you both arguing about your own importance, but I'm sorry to break it to you. It's not all about you. You have a role to play, but it's not all about you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Ha! Salt without saltiness? You are useless! <laughs> Verses 14 to 16 You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. <laughs> Put a bucket over your head. That will stop your light shining. <laughs> I'm the most important. No, I'm the most important. I'm the most important. Stop. Please. If we're in lockdown until Christmas, I hope I'm not with you two. You're both mentioned in the Bible and you are both important. But when you keep thinking about yourselves and what you can do, you start to think less of others around you and what God can do through you. Sorry, I think I get it now, and it's pretty cool we get a mention in the Bible. God has given us gifts, but we need to use them. Maybe God could use us to help people in more ways than just for seasoning people's food and lighting the world around them. Yes, we can share God's love and helping others even in small ways. I can add flavour, richness and joy of life and faith and share it with those around me. And you can bring light and God's love to those who are having difficult, dark times. I can help others who have lost their way or are in need of encouragement. I can bring hope and faith and could be someone to pray with them and keep God's light burning so they know they are not alone. And there are so many practical ways we help too, particularly at the moment. We will need to be more inventive with this social distancing. Even though we are physically apart, we need to be closer together than ever before and look out for one another. You are quick learners. You have so many gifts, but they need to be used and to go the extra mile. The light you shine should not attract attention to yourself. If it's like that, you're holding it. It doesn't do anybody any good to look at the burning bulb or on the person who's holding it. If we shine the light on the path and not on ourselves, then we can find our way and that's the love of God in us. And we share the light of God to help others find their way and so they can also feel the warmth and the joy that God gives. In my doubts, in my failures 
silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea oh, You are the peace in my troubled sea Reach out to those in need, get off those easy chairs, roll up your sleeves and put actions to your prayers. Leave your comfort zone, put on the Christian smile and out of sheer love, do all it takes to go that extra mile. For Jesus' love is true, his love for others can come through you and he will add his blessings to everything you do. So go beyond the comfort zone, bless others in his name and their lives and your lives will never be the same. What blessings God has in store, not just for you and me alone, but for all who take courage to go beyond the comfort zone. Over the last few weeks, we've seen many people going the extra mile by doing extraordinary things and going above and beyond what is expected. We've seen a hundred-year-old Captain Tom raising millions of pounds for the NHS. With the rest of my family, we stepped up our stairs, the equivalent of Kilimanjaro to raise money for Tear Fund. Just like many people have done over the last few weeks, there are many small steps we could take to serve God by going the extra mile to serve others. Love a little bit more? Show love, compassion and friendship to everyone you meet, whether it be someone you know or a complete stranger, you always gain by giving love. Encourage a little bit more. Give people hope and encouragement when they feel like giving up, when they are facing difficult and challenging times. Don't ever be too busy to encourage others. A little bit more. Sometimes all it takes is one more prayer to fix everything. Care a little bit more, be less selfish and think of others' needs rather than your own. 
Kindness is caring for others even when they may not care for you. Forgive a little bit more. When we feel that we have been wronged, it is hard to forgive. Remember, we are not perfect ourselves and we need forgiveness too. By forgiving, you do not change the past, but you sure do change the future. Give a little bit more. Give our time, talents or money in the service to God. No act of kindness, however small, is ever wasted. Have a little more faith. Luke chapter 5 tells us about the paralysed man. His friends lowered him through the roof just to see Jesus. Their faith allowed them to go the extra mile for their friends. This reading is taken from Luke chapter 5 verses 17 to 26. Jesus heals a paralytic. One day as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there, and the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a map and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this f fellow who speaks blasph blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up and take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave God praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Says your sins forgiven, I walk. His sins forgiven, lifts his eyes to heaven, stands up tall while all in shock.
says your sins forgiven are one His sins forgiven lifts his eyes to heaven Stands up tall while all in shock Good morning. Firstly, a big thank you to our children, young people and their teachers for leading us so well this morning. You rose to the challenge when we all can't be in one place and we are so thankful for your willingness to participate. Go the extra mile has been an excellent theme for your service. It is very apt and challenging for the time that we are living in. During lockdown, we have seen time and time again people going the extra mile for other people, and this has been so encouraging. Jesus himself advocated this when he taught us to put others before ourselves. The reading that Andrew read for us from Luke 5 was a familiar one about a man who was lame. That means he couldn't walk. He couldn't even stand up. He could only lie on his mat and wait for his kind friends to help him. The sick man wanted to be well. He wanted to sit up. He wanted to stand and to walk by himself. Now, I think you have been sitting for too long, so it's time for us to add a few actions to this story. There are only four, so hopefully you will remember them. But let's go through them first. So the first word that I want you to look out for or to remember is the word for. And the action that I want you to do is this is count on your fingers and thumb to four really, really quickly. So when I say the word for, we go one, two, three, four. Okay. the second word is see. And this time I want you to cup your hands around your eyes as if you're peering through binoculars. So when I say the word see, we do this. The third word is climbed. So I want you to pretend that you're holding on to a ladder and that you're moving up it and you're climbing up it. And the fourth word and final word is loved. And for this, I want you to wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself a big hug. Everyone now remember those words and actions. Listen out carefully for when I use them in the story. Now make sure you do them, even though I can't see you. Um, doesn't mean that you get out of doing them. So if you're sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. One day, this man's four, one, two, three, four, friends heard that Jesus was in their town. If only he could go and see Jesus, the friends must have said to each other. Surely Jesus could make our friend well. So the four, one, two, three, four, friends picked up the man on his mat. They carried him as they walked down the road to see Jesus. But when they got to the house where Jesus was talking, it was packed full of people. Many people wanted to see Jesus. There was hardly any room inside. People were standing in the doorway trying to get into the house. Other people stood outside looking in the windows. Then the friends remembered the flat roof on top of the house. The friends climbed the stairs outside the house to the roof. They carried their friend with them. The four, one, two, three, four friends began to pull away pieces off the roof. Finally, the hole was big enough. Carefully, the friends lowered the man down and down into the house. Soon he was right in front of Jesus. Jesus loved the man. Stand up, take your mat and walk, Jesus told him. And the man did just that. How happy he was that Jesus had made him well again. How thankful he was for his kind friends. All the people in the house were so surprised. All the people thanked God. Whatever hardships life had dealt the lame man, it was clear that he was blessed with faithful friends. 
When those friends heard that Jesus was in town, they immediately brought the paralysed man to see him. Even crowds of people couldn't keep them from laying their friend at Jesus' feet. Their belief in Jesus, the healer, was so strong that they knew he could make their friend well again. The men tore apart um, the part of the roof so that they could lower their friend down to Jesus. They were willing to make a scene, a mess, and take the consequences for dismantling someone's roof. Jesus was startled but full of admiration for the friends, love for the man, and compassion for his inability to walk. The friends had gone the extra mile. Jesus forgave the man's sins and healed him completely. What an amazing picture of friendship, devotion and love we see here. God calls us to do the same for our friends in need. You and I have friends who need to come to Jesus. It may not be easy, but if each of us are willing to play our part, together we can succeed. It might only take you asking them, can I pray for you? Or show them love and kindness by doing something. I read recently that Tear Fund, who usually sends out prayer requests so that people can pray for their projects, decided to turn the tables and ask their followers for any prayer requests they had. They were so overwhelmed by the response that they are still praying through them. It might be hard to start that conversation, but with text messages and emails, we can give this a go and you might be surprised with the response. We will meet obstacles, but we must never give up. Just like the friends in the story, we must hold on tight to the corner of the mat and keep on going until they come to Jesus. When we introduce them to Jesus, he does the rest. We see that time and time again, when people met Jesus, they suddenly changed. They realised that what they needed in their lives was a friendship with him and a relationship with God the Father. So I'm going to set you a challenge this week. I want you to encourage you to go the extra mile by doing something for someone. You might bring in a neighbour's bin or you might make your mum some lunch or make tray bakes for your family. Whatever you decide to do, the important thing is, is that we do it to show kindness and go the extra mile. Like all good challenges, I have a certificate like this, if you can see it, uh, that I will present to you uh, once you've completed your task. It's available, um, parents and anybody else, to download off the website. Um, And I would love if you take a picture of yourself and let me know how you go on. Let's this week go the extra mile for the people around us, for the people that we know and for the people that we don't know, to show some love and kindness um, through Jesus to them. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a great Heavenly Father, a Father who loves us so much. And we thank you for this story Um, about the lame man and how he was healed, all because of his friend's faithfulness to take him to you. And so, Lord, we really pray that you would give us opportunities this week to show kindness, to go the extra mile for the people around us, the people that we know and the people that we don't know, um, and that we would see you and be able to have conversations about you and to share you with those people, that they would know something of your love for them. We just pray these things in your name. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I pray now for these times. I pray for all of us fighting through the loneliness at home and I pray that we should know that we aren't alone and that you're with us. I thank you for the amazing NHS staff that are working extremely hard to help the people that have the virus. And I pray that you're protecting them as they save your people. I pray that your healing hand is upon all those who are sick and be it your will that they get better. I thank you for the people of this church and how they have not stopped shining for you and spreading your love. I thank you that we build each other up and have the technology to put together a service to worship you. 
even when we can't be together. In your name I pray. Amen. Dear Lord, I pray for the current global issues. I pray for the governments of the countries around the world who are trying their hardest to keep us all safe and healthy during these COVID times. I ask that you will give them the guidance and help they need. I pray, Lord, for the families who have lost loved ones at the recent times, and I pray that you will stay near to them throughout these strange times. I pray, Lord, for the people in other countries where persecution of Christians is an ongoing issue, and I just ask you, Lord, that you will be there with them. I ask, Lord, that you will also help the people who have lost their homes due to natural disasters within the last few months, and the people who have lost jobs due to COVID in the last few weeks, that you will just be there with everyone. Amen. So now let us bring to God those who have sought our prayers. And firstly, we bring to God two young boys, both 13, facing uh, the struggle with cancer. We continue to pray for Timothy Hart, who has undergone some years of treatment and now needs God's special touch upon his body. We pray that his platelets, his temperature would stabilise. We pray also, ultimately, for God's mercy and miraculous healing, complete healing in his young body. Lord, we bring Timothy to you and we ask you to wrap him in your arms and indeed to bring your healing. As we ask God to touch Timothy, so we ask God to touch Daniel Kitson. Lord, we pray for Daniel going through treatment and we ask again in the precious name of Jesus, for healing and we ask too for hope and encouragement and for a peace and calmness that only Christ can give for Timothy and Daniel's families. We pray also for others who are seriously ill For baby Rosie. And for Colette. For Christine. For Mark Armstrong. For little Hannah Smith. We remember to those seeking to overcome COVID. For Ellen Stewart recovering in her care home. For John and Pat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for healing, we pray. And we continue in prayer as we pray, Lord God, you to surround Sammy and Elizabeth with your loving comfort. Lord, bring your peace to Sammy and to his wife Muriel, daughters Alison and Julie, the whole family. And indeed, peace to Elizabeth and her daughter Marion and family as they care for her.
Lord, we give you thanks for our NHS and for our health service and all those who give themselves in caring. And we thank you too for the return from hospital of Tina Donaldson. We ask for full recovery for her. We hear from the Bible in Deuteronomy 33, 27, that the eternal God is our refuge and his everlasting arms are under you. Lord, we continue to pray that you would wrap your everlasting arms, your arms of comfort and grace around those who we have already mentioned who are facing illness, but also those who have lost loved ones in these past days. And we bring to God others who we know who are facing financial trouble or worries of any kind. Lord, have mercy, we pray. And I invite you all to join with me now as we conclude our time of prayer by saying together the words that Jesus gave to us. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thine kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Throwing back the fears that we may hold The Lord is on our side to make us bold Never feel alone, for you are near The beating of my soul is loud and clear For I will stand for you and all in that renew You are my guide in life Hard and steep and low, a vessel for your work. Please make me strong. Father, I am flawed in every way. Unworthy, make me whole. Oh Lord, I pray. For I will stand for you and fall in love with you. You are my guide in life. Distracted by a It's all we need Go the extra mile I hear you say I'm calling for my Lord Hold strong I pray For I will stand for you And all the men with you You are my guiding light Bursting floods of endless love That none can hold Such gifts received or shared good news. Let life begin. I'm sure you, like me, have enjoyed our service uh, thoroughly this morning. Um, again, a final thanks to all of their young people and those involved in putting together this morning's service. We come now to our closing blessing and 
we hear the words of 1 John 4.19, which reminds us that we love because God first loved us. So, may we each personally know God's love deeply, that we would share his love completely. And we finish by sharing together in the words of the grace. We say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.